and feeling confident again. I mean, I didn't know that's what was happening, but right, that, right. that's what was happening. I was starting to regain my confidence. And it was like, even when he took, when it, like I had to go through so many emotions, right. psychological, physical, you know, everything. That's right, we're on live. We're gonna get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? You know, if I'm gonna lose my sight, then God is gonna help me wherever I go. And I'm not gonna just sit here and wait for this to happen. So I ended up deciding to go to travel and teach there. And, uh, but I think that first year, I was very nervous and like something, like something would go wrong and I'd be like, is this the day? Is this the day that I go blind? Mm. You know, and it, it was unsettling. And uh, I didn't tell anyone about it because I thought, well, if I tell someone, they'll tell me to go back to the United States, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was, I was a bit fearful. And uh, the first day I arrived in Indonesia was, uh, I had traveled for two days and was really tired. And um, I went to my business to where I was gonna teach. They, the director showed me it. There was like 18 steps to the top and I fell down. <laughs> oh. I, my shoe got caught on maybe the top step or something. Mm -hmm. I fell down all 18 steps. And the first thought was, oh my gosh, am I going blind? <laughs> you know, I, I just didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I wasn't. I was just, uh, I don't know what happened there, but um, it was quite embarrassing. And I, but I just was bruised. <laughs> I've been in those moments before, so I yeah. feel bad. Oh yeah. my goodness. Oh, what an introduction. And yeah, so I so I was there for a year and I had some some um experiences that when I was traveling, which made me kind of uh, nervous, but it seemed like after that year I got this I I realized it wasn't gonna happen all at once. So I started to relax. And I started to enjoy my students and to, you know, not be afraid all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was a really good year. So uh, I, at the end of that year, I went back to the States and I uh, continued. I, I got a job at Lackland Air Force Base teaching English as a second language to the military, teaching Spanish. And in those two years, my vision decreased to such a point because with RP, it, it turns into, well, first it's night blindness and then it's, it's right. um, tunnel vision. So it had got decreased, my vision had decreased to such a, a point that I was like running into walls, falling down steps. And I live in a small town. So they, they uh, my friend was telling me that people thought I was drinking or, you know, or I had a neurological problem and because oh. I wasn't telling anyone. Oh. I, had, I had had this for 20 years and I thought, by that time, I was convinced I was just clumsy or, you know, I thought I don't have the, the bad kind of RP. I just didn't ex accept it or something. Right, right, right. And and so I started teaching this the Spanish class to high school students. And I was also teaching an Asian studies class to a college uh, branch, a new branch in the in my hometown. Mm. And I couldn't really hear my students very well and i was tripping over their books because i was too embarrassed to say put them under the the table and right. you know like i just wasn't doing very well and when i when i first started teaching i did get tested by uh by a doctor and i had 60 percent hearing loss as well as vision loss and what was so, that from the hearing yeah. loss yes uh-huh what was it that was, the hearing loss came from what uh you don't know well, we thought it might be Usher syndrome, mm -hmm. but it, it was uh, um, it like it might be the third kind of Usher syndrome where you get it later, mm -hmm. hearing loss later, mm -hmm. and it's like type three. They said, okay. and, uh, but so I was having trouble hearing my students, and I couldn't really 
<laughs> Sometimes when I was calling role in my Asian studies class, I couldn't hear the students doing. <laughs> it was just some really weird situations. And then I got hearing aids, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can even hear them turn the page. It was such a huge difference. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And then、uh, I I was assigned、uh, an orientation and mobility instructor, and he was completely blind.、Mm-hmm. And he kept telling me, Amy, let's go to your workplace. I can help you practice,、uh, like get to know your workplace. Right,、better. right. Get familiar with it. Right. Yeah, I was like, no way. <laughs> I did not want anyone to know that I had any any problems, you know. And I, I'm like, oh yeah.、Uh, I just told him I was really busy, and I, I I didn't I didn't follow up with anything. But he did not let me.、Uh, he did not let me、um, stop. He kept calling me, and he said, "We really need to do some orientation and mobility training. How about if we just go out in your in your neighborhood, you, you know?" And I thought, "Gosh, he's taken. He's gone to so much trouble to help me.、Mm-hmm. You know, I felt really、um, ungrateful." <laughs> and I, I so I said, "Okay, I will do it. I didn't want to hurt his feelings." And、uh, the, so the first the first time we around went around, and I I didn't really I didn't close my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and、um, he continued, and he asked me to go around, like、uh, around my neighborhood, with sleep shades.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. This completely, totally opened the door for me because I, we were like our our situations were reversed. It was as if he were sighted and I were the the, the completely blind person, and it was. I I remember it was kind of like it felt like it. A, a big adventure when I was overseas. Like I was, I was excited and frightened at the same time.、Mm-hmm. I was like, I can't believe it. It's like we switched places, and I walked for a, a, a mile, and then we came back, and I took off my sleep shades just before we got to the house. It was、mm-hmm. such an exhilarating. I don't know what kind of experience. And he said, No, Amy, it's not. What did he say?、Uh, I said. It's not like we change places," he said. "You're just learning to use your non-visual vision." Right, like, right. And the way he said it, it like opened my, it it made me like, like, not be so close-minded about、um, white cane training. And I I couldn't believe that we'd done that. With I had complete, I'd gone a whole mile, and I hadn't got hit by a car. Right, you know, it was right. So amazing. And then every month after that, we met, and he took me down. I crossed like super busy roads, and、uh, in the in the heart of Erie, which is the third largest city in Pennsylvania, and he did this. He he's the one that that opened opened the door to all of this these、uh, building my skills up and feeling confident again. I mean, I didn't know that's what was happening, but right, that's, right. that's what was happening. I was starting to regain my confidence, and. It was like even when he took when it, like I had to go through so many emotions,、right. psychological, physical, you know, everything, emotional, and、uh, I mean, I was so afraid that if people found out that I had sight loss, then they wouldn't they wouldn't behave, and my my students wouldn't behave, the other teachers would treat me differently. I had all of these terrible fears, and I think many 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 people do, you know, they have the same kinds of fears, and. It wasn't until the very end of that year, it 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 just really completely changed my life. This this orientation and mobility training, and I think it was because he was completely blind, and he was one of the few、right. instructors in the United States that was completely blind and doing it. And I thought, he can teach me to do O and M training, and he has no sight, and and he taught me the difference between vision and sight. Oh my gosh, goodness! I was just so so. Um, changed by the whole thing, and he would tell he like when we, we passed people, he would say, "Hi, how you doing?" I'm like, "How does he know there's someone?" Right, there? right. It, it was just so many things that I, I just learned. So I like in the beginning, I didn't like him. <laughs> okay, sure you did because it was something new to you, but at, at least it also、uh, learned、uh, showed you how to trust yourself and your instincts. And it, and and I know for me, it's it's harder to understand because I lost my sight. Long time ago, like when I was two, but for people who for people who you who lose their sight later on in life, man, those are the ones who who I I give、uh, kudos to because they had sight and then they lose it, so they have to deal with a, a whole new world. Just that you know, with that、uh, 
in that instance. So I definitely commend you on uh, on that because I mean I, I'm quite sure it was a very uh, life changing experience for you. Yeah, it, definitely. It was, yeah. And, right, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. So just I the, my whole feeling towards him changed. Like in the beginning, I was just like I I was trying to pretend he wasn't there, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and by the end, I was like I was just so excited to see him you know and i invited him to my my uh students uh like i had to go talk to my principal wanted me to talk to the students about my sight loss and tell them some of the like i learned braille and all of these different things and so i invited him to come but he he didn't come but anyway it was like i i wasn't i was so open about it by the end of the year you know it really changed my life and Definitely. that was the first, yeah, that was the first book that I wrote was, uh, it was called uh, Mobility Matters, Stepping Out in Faith. And because that was the problem that after traveling over all over the world, I couldn't even walk down the street without falling, you know. And I was just such a professional, um, it was, it was, I think so many people are afraid of losing their jobs with their sight loss. And that's, that's what I was afraid of, 